Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. We're going to be talking about the Canik TP9 SF Elite. This is the second Canik that I've had an opportunity to take a look at, and I wanted to provide you guys a review of this pistol and give you my opinions about uh, what I thought about its reliability, its ergonomics, things I like, things I don't like, and then who I would recommend it to. And we'll be talking about that here in just a second. But before we get into that, let's talk about us. Can we do that for a second? If you guys haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel. About 80% of you guys are not subscribed and it would really help out expanding the channel and be able to provide better and more content to you guys. If you're interested in getting notifications of all the new stuff that's going on, go ahead and hit that notification bell as well. Likes and comments are a great way to support the channel. And my question to you guys is, do you think the TP9 series of pistols are the Glock killers? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. We're going to be talking about that not only in this video, but some other videos moving forward as well. And then the final way to really support the channel is sharing this video with all of your friends, regardless if that is just hitting that share uh, icon and then copying the link, texting it to someone, post it on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or whatever the case may be, it really does help the channel. Because let's say it together, folks, sharing is caring, right? <laughs> okay, let's get into this video. Normally, I would talk to you guys about the specifications behind this particular pistol, but I'm not going to insult your intelligence because I'm pretty sure most of you know how the interwebs work and can figure out how to type things into the Googles. If you can't, I've got them right here so you guys can check out the specifics or you can just swing on by Canik's website and look at all of the different dimensions and weights uh, from there. So. What I will say is that this is going to be very similar to a Glock 19 sized pistol. It is going to be what is considered a compact uh, 9mm semi-automatic pistol, so just keep that in mind. So let's talk about the things that I didn't particularly care about this pistol first, because we're all drama queens, we want to hear the bad stuff first, so let's just get it out of the way and talk about the things that I'm just not necessarily a huge fan of when it comes to this pistol. The first is going to be the frame here on the pistol grip itself. I'm not a big fan of the texture. It seems a little underwhelming in my opinion. I'm more used to the Glock 19 Gen 4, Gen 5 texture, maybe an M&P 9 2.0, or heck, even a G3, G2C, something like that. Uh, I'm more of a fan of those grip textures, a little bit more aggressive, but realistically, this is good. It's just a little underwhelming. In addition to that, the back strap here has a roll pin that you're gonna to have to tap out. Yes, I do know that Glocks do the same thing, but those can be realistically just pushed out. These actually have to kind of be tapped out, and it's just a little cumbersome in my opinion. The next thing I'm gonna say is I'm a big fan of this two-tone look. Not too many pistols out on the market today have this look, and I do really like this. However, this is a Cerakote on this titanium finish here, and while that's not that big of a deal, especially for people who may pick one of these up and shoot it a few times a year, that's not going to be that big of a deal. But people who are looking to use this as a EDC pistol, where they're gonna be carrying it every single day, putting it into a holster, pulling it out of a holster on a regular basis, the Cerakote's eventually gonna to start to wear down. If this is going to be a pistol that you eventually sell, that worn finish may have diminishing returns on the value of this when you decide to go ahead and sell it, maybe you know, bump up to a different, better pistol if there is such a thing. That's purely subjective, but realistically, the Cerakote finish on this is something that uh, I'm just really not a big fan of. Now, I will say that there is a nitrated finish on the slide itself underneath the Cerakote, so that's going to protect it against rust and corrosion, so that's a good thing, but the Cerakote finish, mm, not necessarily a big fan about it. The next thing that I want to say is that this is a little heavy uh, in comparison to like a Glock 19. It's going to be on the heavier side, so individuals who are looking to pick one of these up 
for a EDC concealed carry pistol, you may have to get used to the weight of this being just a slight heavier than some of the other pistols on the market. The last thing I will say is this does have a higher bore axis than some of the other pistols that I'm used to. For someone like me, that's easy to mitigate. You know, just good grip, good posture, good stance will all mitigate um, the high bore axis and the recoil impulse of this pistol. But I will also say that for individuals who are new or inexperienced with pistols, this may be a little challenging for them to shoot with that muzzle flip. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Again, not that big of a deal. You can train around that, but it is something that you're gonna to have to get used to right off the bat. Now let's talk about reliability. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because a friend of mine, Honest Outlaw, has done a review of this several years ago when this first came out, and he did have some reliability issues. Now, was that a bad pistol that he got and um, they've improved it since? I don't know. But he had about 15 malfunctions in the 500 rounds that he put through his pistol on his initial impressions video. What I can say is I've put about 300 rounds through this uh, so far, maybe a little bit over, and I've had zero malfunctions, and I'm pleasantly surprised at that. I'm really happy that I've had zero issues. You're gonna have most of your malfunctions between the 200 to 500 round mark anyway, but seeing that I've had zero, that's a good sign. Now, again, is that something to where maybe Honest Outlaw had a bad pistol, I have a good one, or is it can it kind of took his remarks to heart and improved some of the internals on this and provided a better product some years later. I'm kind of leaning towards the second opinion, but who knows, at the end of the day, this has run flawlessly, and I said that on purpose. All right, so let's get into the things that I really do like about this pistol. Anytime I pick up a new pistol, regardless if I'm borrowing, buying, or just looking at it at the store, there's two things that I'm going to be looking at, and that is going to be the sights and the trigger. Just like the TP9 Elite SC, this is going to come with worn tactical sights right out of the box. And for me, that's a huge plus. I really did like that. Now, the difference between the Elite SC to the SF Elite is that the Elite SC or the subcompact version of this pistol is going to have a white dot front sight where this has a fiber optic front sight. In addition, this front sight blade is going to be a little bit more narrow and you're going to be able to get more precise shots on target with this blacked out rear U-notched sight. I think the combination with this particular setup is really nice and I think that you are going to be able to get more accuracy out of this pistol than the Elite SC. Two different reasons, the sights and then the sight radius as well. I do understand that. The next thing that I really do like about this pistol, and it goes for all the TP9 series of pistol, is that's going to be the trigger. This trigger is really, really nice, coming in right around that 3.75 to four pound mark. So it's going to be on the lighter side for most striker fired pistols. I really, really do like that. I did get a comment in my Elite SC video that you shouldn't have a light trigger for new or inexperienced shooters. And I understand where he's coming from on that, but I kind of disagree. And the reason for that is one of my biggest fans is going to be my daughter. She likes to come to the range with me every once in a while, and she got to shoot this pistol, and she really, really did like it. One of the reasons why that she liked it so much was because the trigger was a little bit easier for her to pull. Now, she's shot my Glock 19, and she didn't like that at all because the trigger yeah. was a little okay. heavier. You're she good? did shoot yeah. this. You she like liked it. it. Yeah. She good. asked me to keep it, so that's what we're going, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Uh, this is a officially going to be her range pistol anytime we go to the range together. So just um, there's that for you guys to take into consideration whether you think it, uh, it matters or not. But let's talk about this trigger and show you guys what we're talking about. Um, this is going to have a uh, pretty normal take up, a little bit longer than what I'm used to in comparison to some of the other striker fire pistols that I've shot. But once you get to that wall, you're not gonna have any creep once you're trying to break that trigger over. It's going to hit that wall and stick. And I really do like that. And here it is right there. That's where it breaks over. Really do like that. And then your reset is very short and tactile right there. Can you believe that is really super short and it actually even pushes your finger forward 
just ever so slightly. So I do like that as well. And then here you go. Here's your brake again. And man, I tell you, 3.75 to about four pounds. I really do like that a whole bunch. I talked about the two-tone look. I really do like that. The pistol feels good in the hand. While I'm not a big fan of the texture, it does feel good. The ergonomics on this pistol is pretty good. Pretty shallow grip angle, uh, more so than what a Glock would have. And then when you pull it up, the sights just really seem to align themselves. It's gonna be a little fine tuning when you press out, but those, those sights are really going to line up. Um, as you present this pistol, something I really do like about it as well. The next thing that I'll say about this pistol is it's going to come with a lot of extras to include a holster. Now, the first iteration of this pistol had a Serpa style holster. A lot of people don't like the Blackhawk Serpa style uh, retention holsters, and I can understand why. Um, I've used them in the past. They're okay, but they have some major flaws where this is just a simple Kydex holster. Again, Canik, I think, listened to the market, made that change, and not only was it a, probably a little bit cheaper for them to produce these holsters, uh, but I think it's actually a pretty decent paddle holster as well. You can switch these uh, clips here to the other side so you can run this inside the waistband or outside the waistband, so I do like that as well. Pretty simple, nothing really to write home about, but at the end of the day, it is a holster that you can put this pistol in and basically you know, carry it right out of the store if you should choose to do so. So um, you know, obviously check your jurisdiction, your laws and everything, but uh, in addition to that, you're going to have additional fiber optic uh, sites to swap out or to change if it gets damaged. It does have an additional uh, 15 round magazine, so that's gonna be two 15 round magazines. You're gonna have a bore brush and a ramrod and a trigger lock as well. So if you guys are concerned about safety uh, with this pistol, you have the option to lock it up. All of this is going to come in right around that $400 mark. A lot of you are going to be able to find it a lot cheaper. I did find some on GunBroker for about $389. I also saw some for about $429. I purchased this one from my local store, American Cash Exchange, for about $420, and I did buy it right before the election. So prices did kind of tick up there, so I can understand that, but you can find these a lot cheaper. Some people, I'm sure, is going to be able to find these about three, 350 mark, and I would say that this pistol is well worth that price. So if you're able to find it right around that 375 mark, I would say jump on it. Now, who would I recommend this pistol to? And um, that's always a difficult question to answer. Obviously, if you are on a budget, by all means, this is going to be a top five pistol in my opinion. But for individuals who have been around pistols for a long time, like myself, uh, who've gone through a lot of training and are used to very specific types of pistols, this may not necessarily be in the top five. I can name off five other pistols that I would probably recommend ahead of this if cost is not an option. However, if someone is new, inexperienced, or on a budget, this is definitely going to be in the top five, if not in the top three. I would say um, price, if price is an issue, towards G3C all the way, uh, the Canik TP9 SF Elite and the Elite SC, so the subcompact version of this pistol, those would be running number two and three, I would think. Maybe that would change later, I don't know, but as of right now with the pistols that I've looked at, this would definitely be in a top three for individuals who are new, inexperienced, or on a budget. Let me know what you guys think. Sound off in the comment section down below. Naturally, I wanna hear what you guys have to say about this pistol if you have any experience, or if you are new and you're looking for a pistol, ask any question you have about this and I can get you some more information as well. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much for checking things out. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for all of my Patreon members. You guys are rocking it. It is awesome that you are supporting the channel with not only your time, but also your money as well. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, I've got tons of links down in the description below, not only to Patreon, but also a number of affiliate links to include 
fitandfire.com. That's my website to supplement everything that we're doing with this channel. So if you're interested in finding direct links, you can check that out there. All right, man, we're going to go ahead and shut this one down. Thank you again so very much. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.